I'm Ksenia and recently I posted an article which talked about the soul planet and so I decided um, after all the questions that I received about the soul planet that it would be a good idea to talk about the Karakas. Now the Karakas are a Jaimini astrology um, assessment tool or technique and it refers to planets and their longitude in the chart. Um, and what, it, how it actually works is by judging the different uh, longitudinal degrees, um, we can then ascertain what each different planet means for us on a very, very personal level. In um, uh, ancient schools of astrology, we had Venus representing certain things, relationships and beauty and love, and Mars representing war and that warrior nature, and so on and so on for all the planets. Well, when we talk about the characters in Gemini astrology, we're actually talking about each planet. doesn't matter what its overarching uh, general theme is, where it falls in, in, um, in regards to its uh, longitudinal degree actually gives it extra significance on a very personal level. And uh, that might sound a bit strange and uh, hard to get a grip on, but I will explain it a little more as we go through this video. So the first one, the uh, first thing we want to look at is the planet with the highest degree in the horoscope. This is called the Atma Karaka. And this is what I refer to when I talk about the soul planet, because the Atma Karaka in Jaimini astrology, it, it represents your soul and your soul's journey this lifetime. What you're here to, to discover, to grow from on a soul level. Um, I'll use my uh, Atma Karaka planet as an example. My Atma Karaka planet, interestingly enough, happens to be Mars, located at 28 degrees of Leo. So you can imagine, um, for me, in this last three, two to three weeks since the eclipse has occurred at that very degree, my soul has gone through massive upheaval, like you've no idea. But um, the whole world is experiencing that type of um, stressful, um, overwhelm energy, that um, devastating sort of um, energy at the moment. Uh, but for me personally, I'm feeling it on a soul level because of the location of my Atma Karaka. Now that I'll just point out, I don't want to be sort of all negative and everything, but um, when you um, go through some kind of ending in life, it heralds new beginnings. Endings always mean new beginnings in some way. So yes, the world's going through all this upheaval. Personally, on, on my own level, my soul is, is going through some kind of a, a really in-depth transformation at the moment. Um, but the thing that's keeping my head above water, so to speak, is the knowledge that it's actually going to mean a new beginning. And I love new beginnings. So I'm hanging in there and I hope everyone else is too with the, um, uh, the eclipse residue energy, if you like. But back to the, um, the significance of the Atma Karaka. For my Atma Karaka being Mars, um, I, I like to, for my own understanding, to give it some kind of an um, a archetypal framework or context. And Mars is the warrior. Um, Mars is the courageous hero. It is the um, entrepreneur, the instigator, the, the go-getter energy. So for me, my soul journey this lifetime is all about being that warrior. Um, interestingly enough, um, my Atma Karaka planet, Mars, is in Leo. And therefore, I like to think of uh, it as being... Um, because Leo is the sign of royalty, it's the sign of the king, or if you want to take the gender out of it, the king or the queen, um, or a princess, or it's that very royal regal sign. So my Atma Karaka is, to me, uh, the warrior princess. And um, I love that because that's a lot of the time what it feels like as I go journey through life. Yep, I have to be brave. I have to be courageous. That's what my soul is here to experience. And um, I need to do it in a very dignified way as much as I'm able to. Um, 
the, the interesting thing is uh, my parents had no idea of that. My parents don't um, subscribe to the ideas of astrology, um, but they named me Ksenia, which in Greek, um, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, the Greek version of Ksenia happens to be Xena. And I don't know if you're like me, a child of the, the 80s and 90s, but um, <laughs> there was a show called Xena Warrior Princess. And when I read that that's what my name uh, is in Greek, I was like, oh my goodness, how perfect is that? The, the way the world works in such synchronicity, it's just delightful. So, so in the birth chart, the, um, the planets that are aspecting your soul planet are really, really significant. For me, I have the moon aspecting my soul planet. And interestingly enough, my warrior journey uh, my warrior princess journey this lifetime is heavily connected to children and motherhood because my soul planet is aspected by the moon. Very, very significant. So my soul journey, my soul transformation, my soul growth is all tied to the idea of being a warrior princess with regard to motherhood. So that's, I found that a really insightful tool when I do people's charts to look at um, an archetypal character for the soul planet and also relate it to what is being aspected and what, what that is then triggering in, in somebody's nature. A well-aspected soul planet will actually mean great success in life. Equally, um, a soul planet that has a lot of hard aspects to it will probably mean a lot more challenge. Um, doesn't mean that a success can't be achieved, but the soul journey is going to be one of um, lots of upheaval and unfortunately that's my scenario and so life is um, is all about um, crisis situations even even if not in an external sense crisis um, but an internal crisis situations that lead to um, transformation and soul growth ultimately and that's the thing we always have to keep in mind when we're going through crisis is that the the aim is always growth so that's the atma karaka the planet with the highest degree in the natal chart so you might like to go and check what that planet is for you what has the highest degree and then see what that perhaps represents in your life and your soul journey I will point out, um, and I probably should have said this at the start, but the um, the Gemini um, technique uses the seven visible planets. So um, we use we use the seven visible planets to determine uh, what our um, soul planet and the subsequent characters that I'm going to talk about are. Um, so uh, you will be looking for um, the sun and the moon as luminaries, but also come under the terminology of planets in this instance and um, then Mercury, uh, Venus, M Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. We can also incorporate um, modern planets and we say modern planets uh, even though some of them are 200 years old. Um, the, we look at um, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto as well and that can give us some extra um, insight for sure and, and extra themes to our particular soul journey or the other characters um, but generally when we're talking the Jamie technique we're using the seven visible planets so if you're looking at your chart you might like to incorporate um, the the invisible to the naked eye planets as well as the visible planets and just see what that says for you in your chart so we've talked about the planet with the highest degree in the chart the planet with the next degree down so I had 28 degrees of um, Leo, my Mars is at, and that's my Atma Karaka. So then the planet with the next lowest degree for me, it's um, my moon at 23 degrees Libra. So 20, 28 degrees for Mars, 23 degrees for Libra, and we're going to keep going down and down until we reach the planet with the lowest degree. But the next one down is all about career. It's all about profession. It's all about um, our intellect and our passions. This is called the Amatya Karaka. And um, if you want to get some idea about careers or um, you know, interests or passions that, that you can pursue in life um, that will give you a lot of satisfaction, then you can look to this Karaka to, uh, as an indicator of what that might mean for me. 
for me, I have moon uh, as my, um, my career planet. And so anything tied to looking after children or, or even um, other moon type energies, anything that involves um, being a nurturer or, or, a, or a guide in terms of other people's evolution, that's something that I can look at as a potential career option. Um, anything that, re that requires a great deal of empathy because the moon is often indicative of um, empathetic ability. Um, in, in the chart depending on where it's placed and, and so if you know if we're looking at career we need to look at say where the career planet happens to be placed for us in the chart um, and what that perhaps then indicates in terms of career options um, and and professional options the next planet down in degrees in your chart it will represent your siblings and your brothers and sisters and how you relate to them what they're like how they achieve in life themselves um, and they're pretty much their role in your journey through life. So this is um, called, now I hope I can pronounce this one right, the Pratrakarika. You might like to <laughs> write and correct me if I'm wrong with that one. Um, I'm not brilliant at Sanskrit, let me tell you. But that's what it represents. It represents the siblings uh, in our life and um, and how we interact with them and um, what their role is by the placement of the, the type of planet and the character of the planet and the placement of the, the planet in our chart and also the aspects made to that particular planet as well. The next planet down in degree or the, the fourth planet from your top degree planet, the soul planet, is the Matri Karaka. And the Matri Karaka represents very similarly to the fourth house in the chart, um, our roots and our heritage. And it also represents the mother. Now around this area, um, there are a couple of different schools of thought and things break up a little. Um, it's considered that uh, in some schools of thought that the, um, the Matri Karaka is actually representative of the parents, both parents, the nurturing parent and the provider parent, male, female. Um, and then there's other schools of thought that say, no, this is just the mother and there's another Karaka for the father. Um, I tend to kind of see this one as representative of both. Uh, but keep this in mind when you look at your own chart, there might be a, you know, you might find that one way plays out better for you in your interpretation than another. And this is where the next step comes in. The Pitru Karaka is um, in some cases representative of the father, um, but uh, in other cases it represents, the, in other schools of thought I should say, it represents the children and it has its links to the fifth house of creativity, of um, uh, pleasure, joy, entertainment, all those fifth house kind of things. Um, and so when you find this Karaka, um, the fifth uh, Karaka from the top degree planet, um, then you, you get an indication of, uh, of how children will play out in your life. Um, you get an indication of what they'll be like and you get an indication of uh, how successful they'll be or, or, or not. Uh, and that can be seen by the, um, the Pitru Karaka, Karaka, which is the, the planet that has the fifth, um, fifth uh, smallest degree, if you like, in the chart. Uh, so, for example, um, my, my Pitru Karaka for me is at 11 degrees of Cancer and that's my Mercury and my children are very witty, very bright, very um, very outgoing and social uh, and, and very um, uh, yeah, joyful and, and fun and playful as many children are but my, my children are like the, particularly like the, um, the social connectors. We've got children at our house, all their friends come over all the time, nearly every night of the week. They're just that really social, like to be where the action is kind of children and that's seen by Mercury being the um, Pitru Karaka. The next one is the Nati Karaka. And this, this one is tied to sixth house matters. So this can represent um, our health 
and our well-being, our physical ability to do life, it can also represent um, uh, conflicts. And if badly aspected, you may find that there's um, perhaps a lot of conflict in your life. Um, if it's well aspected, you might find that your, your ride through life is very smooth and, and unflurried. Uh, you also might find that your health is very vigorous and, and good. Um, so this can be seen by um, the character with the sixth uh, lowest degree. And uh, yeah, it's, it's um, very tied to sixth house things and can often also indicate where we will be of service to the world where we will be, um, where we where we can give our our energies in terms of making the world a better place, of fixing things, of making things right, which are all tied to sixth house things. And finally, and this is the one for all you single people out there, you've all been waiting for. This is the Dara Karaka. This is represented by the planet with the lowest degree, and it will indicate the kind of person that you will be drawn to as a spouse, as a partner. So for example, um, my Dara Karaka is the sun. I like, I'm always attracted to people who are um, very bright and shining and visible and uh, very strong and full of leadership. All those um, sun slash Leo qualities I, I admire in people and they're the people I'm drawn to, interestingly enough. Um, so for you, uh, what's your Dara Karaka? What's the planet with the lowest degree? Does it represent your partner that you currently have? Uh, does it represent the kind of men or women that you're drawn to uh, in, in a relationship sense? What does your Dara Karaka say about you? And where is it placed in your chart? And what does that mean for you particularly uh, in terms of your relationships in general and, and the kind of relationships that you have. What are the aspects to that planet? What is the, the dignity of that planet in the sign that it's in? All these things we take into consideration when we're assessing um, these various aspects of our life, our parents, our children, our spouse and partners, our um, career longings and aspirations, our health and well-being and our soul, all these things represented by the characters in the chart and it makes for a very interesting reading of the uh, the natal chart and also if you're into this sort of thing a very interesting reading of things like the D9 and the D12 and even the D60 because um, there's a lot of indications there about who we are as well but that's another uh, that's for another video on another day in the meantime I do hope that you are coping with this post eclipse resonance um, and that somehow uh, yeah you you are feeling some soul liberation and expansion and growth at this time and that it's all good so bless you all thank you for your time and I hope I was able to help you learn something today